All right, you guys, here we go. We're getting to the good stuff in Java. So um, object oriented programming here. Uh, all right, well, let's just get started. So today, this video is going to be about really like, what does it mean um, to be an object in Java? How do we instantiate an object? And so really just how do we get two different classes to work together? Um, and we'll just do that with a simple method or two, which is, in other words, we'll just put like one function in there and call it from the other class. Okay, that'll kind of be the basics. And then the next videos will go more over uh, variables and different instances of the same class and how we can um, keep track of those objects. Okay, so Java is an object oriented um, language. And you've already seen that a little bit with things like uh, when we use the scanner. So when we wrote this line, scanner keyboard equals new scanner, this new keyword is saying create a new object in memory. And essentially every non-primitive variable you make will be an object. And then that object has all of the attributes and methods um, of the class that it came from. So in other words, um, we made an object called keyboard of the scanner class, just like we would write um, int named num1 so this is of data type scanner this name is keyboard and then it's got all the methods from the scanner class so now this keyboard below we could go oh now i want to run or i guess i could type it over here we could go keyboard dot next int because the scanner class has a function or a method called next int um, so every object now has access to everything from the scanner class uh, one way to think of a class is like a blueprint or like a factory that can create objects and so once you set up the blueprint right you can go boom and stamp out a keyboard or a scanner you can stamp out another one and another one and another one so i often give the example like if you were making a video game right you would make one class called troll and then you would stamp out a hundred different trolls right and each one would have their own health and their own maybe slight different coloring or height or power level you could have red trolls that are more powerful than blue trolls um, things like that but one well-written class or blueprint could keep track of every single one of those uh, different trolls okay so that being said let's go ahead so uh here's another example um, I'm making saying of the chicken class. My chicken is named Yeller. And here I'm saying make a new chicken. This time I'm not passing anything in. Um, all of our basic classes we do, um, we won't yet set up the constructors. That'll be in a later video, okay? So this line right here will instantiate. That's the verb to make a new object. So it will instantiate the chicken class and make an object called Yeller, right? And here's our chicken named Yeller. Okay, that's our object. All right, so let's look at what a class has really quick. Okay, so a class basically just has two types of things. Um, so if I have a class called troll, uh, basically, all it would have is something like an integer health. So it has variables. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Um, and then it would have functions. Um, so essentially, what that is, is it's facts about it. So like, Okay, it has a health, it could have a string name, um, it could have a string color, right? It could have whatever attributes about it there are. So whatever facts we want to differentiate between one troll and another, right? It could have a, another integer called age. So there's facts about it. But then it also has abilities or actions that it could do, right? So I could make like a, a public void. That's just, we'll get into what that means but I can make in like in a, whoops, an attack function, okay? And in there could, you know, just uh, do an attack, right? And it does some damage to the player or something. And then I could go public void, uh, like roar, and it could somehow like uh, shout really loud, right? Some crazy ancient primordial troll scream. Right. So basically all this class has is facts that and, and these can change, but you will keep track of that information. Right. Maybe the uh, coloring will change. Definitely the health will change as it gets attacked and loses health. But there's these facts that are stored in memory and kept track of. And then it has abilities, actions that it can do. Um, and that's essentially it. So variables are go by a lot of different names in Java. Um, I'll usually call them attributes or variables. Um, 
And then we can also call fields, class variables, that's a super um, easy one, member variables, um, or the other word I'll use other in attributes is instance variables, because when we instantiate a class, we make one instance. So one instance of the troll class, because there could be 20 trolls in any level or game, right? But one instance is one of those trolls, and it has its own values for the variable. So that instance has its own variables of health, right? One troll could have 90 health left, and the other one could have 100. All right, big picture. There are variables, and there are functions. We call the functions methods. All right, here's a UML diagram. It just It's a really quick way of showing, like, here's the name of the class. Here's the attributes or variables it has, and here's the abilities or methods it has. So here's some sample ones I just grabbed off the internet really quick. So a loan account um, would have a type, that's the name of the variable, and it's a type string. Um, it would have an account name, that's also a string, and so on and so forth. Um, date is a class, that's like a data type, um, and so on. And then down here, the uh, same thing, you got methods down here, like you could set a code that would take in a string, you could get a code that would return a string. So this diagram tells you really quickly the name of the class, the variables, and their data types, and then functions with input values and return values. And just a quick way, just a snapshot to say, oh, I kind of get what's going on there. All right. So let's look at methods really quick. We did this in C, so most of this will be review. Um, uh, we've already been using some, so whenever we created a scanner object, we could call on its functions or its methods from the scanner class. Um, out is actually um, an object of the print stream, which comes from system. And so this object right here can call its method to print line or to print. Um, if any time you make a string, because it's a non-primitive, that's actually um, an object, and so then you can call on its methods. So we could, uh, this would be more like the main, but if you did uh, string name equals uh, Sammy, that's creating an object. It doesn't look like it. What's really basically going on, it's, it's not exactly, there's a small difference, but basically what's happening is you're generating a new object of the string class and giving it a starting value of Sammy. Now these two are slightly different on how it allocates memory, but basically doing the same thing. Either way, you're making an object of the string class called name, and that's why afterwards, you can say um, name.length is because objects, you can call on their methods. So you can say name.length, or you could say is name.equals to Sam. Oh, no, it's not. But once you have an object, you're calling, you can call on any of the methods from that class. Okay, uh, to create a method, you, again, you could leave some of these out, like you don't need to write the public, but you do need to write the return type. You do need to write the name. And then you can leave the inputs blank. I know in C, we'd often write void in there because we're sending nothing in. Um, but for all of our functions right now, let's make them all public. Uh, as we move on, you'll learn more about what protected or private mean and why we would want those. Um, for now, we're going to make all of our um, methods public, OK? So I said return nothing. So it's just doing an action, right? Attack, and there's no inputs. And so we're going to start with simple functions like that, OK? And so here's just a snapshot of what each piece would do, and you can read that at your own leisure. OK, so now let's actually get two classes to work together. So here is an example uh, with chicken. I'm going to do it with trolls, OK? So let's make this full screen. Um, I can even uh, scroll to make it a little bigger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one, and I'm going to do a little split screen here. So you can just drag the tab over and go move to other view. And now I've got this like split screen. So I'm going to delete a lot of this, OK? So for the troll, all I'm going to do is it's just going to have a roar function, OK? I'm going to make it public so it's accessible um, by classes anywhere. Now protected or nothing there it would actually work but let's keep it um, public again we're not going to return anything all we're going to do is system dot out 
dot print line roar. Okay, so that's our really simple method. Um, but now we want to actually make an object of the troll class. So let's make our main. Um, so over here, I'm going to call this class. Oh, let's make that larger. I'm going to make this class troll runner. The reason for that is only one class is ever going to have the main in it. And I want to be really clear in the name of the class, which class is the one that I start, right? I'm not actually going to run this in the Java command. I'm not going to like there's no main in that. So it's not going to play. It's just ready over here to be used by your runner class. So over here, I'm going to do our public static void main. Uh, got a collection of strings that we call arguments. And there we go. OK, so in here, what I can do now is make an object of the troll class. So just like I would have said scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot in um, and I'll delete that because I didn't import the scanner class. I'm going to say of the class troll. I'm going to make one called ooh, um, this one's going to be called grumble. OK, and it's equal to we're creating a new object of the troll class. Are we sending it any starting information? No, we have not set up a constructor here to take in information. So we're sending it nothing. We're just making a blank troll. OK, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. <clears throat> so now I've made a troll called Grumble. Looking over at the troll class, it's pretty simple. All he can do is roar and that's it. He has no facts about him. He has no other abilities. OK, so what I need to do now is save these two classes in the same folder, because when you say troll, it's going to say that's not a built in Java thing. That must be a file name or a class in this same folder. And so the computer looks for something called troll.java or actually troll.class. Um, and it looks for that in that same directory. So over here, we need to save and I'm going to go up a directory, up a directory to my workspace. I'm going to make a new one for 0421. We're going in and I'm going to make this troll. Make sure it's a dot Java and save. OK, we're good to go there. Over here, I'm going to click and control S in this same exact directory where I see troll. I'm going to make my troll runner dot Java. So these are in the same directory. Now I can right click and go open in CMD and I can say Java C. Now there's a shortcut here. I'm not going to show you that first, uh, but what I want to do is go. I want to compile. Let's actually try and do the troll runner dot Java and oh nice. The newer Java actually goes ahead and compiles everything for you. Um, in the olden days, back when I programmed on a typewriter. No, I'm just kidding. But usually you, you usually have to um, compile troll first, because otherwise here when it said I'm looking for troll, it would say, whoa, there's no such troll dot class yet. And so nowadays, though, you can just compile everything. So the shortcut I was going to show you is Java C. You can just do wildcard asterisk dot Java. And what that does is it compiles every single dot Java file in the entire folder. And we're in the folder 0421 in workspace that I just created. There's two Java files in there. And so when I hit enter, it'll compile um, just these two files. OK, and I can go into that directory, right click, open in File Explorer and look at that. They're both dot class. So both of these dot Java files got um, compiled and worked fine. OK. So let's go ahead and tell it to do something now. All right. So right now, all I did was create an object. I mean, we're not going to see anything, right? So now I want my troll named Grumble to dot do his method, his action called roar. OK, and let's actually do it a couple times. So I'm going to copy that and let's just paste it a couple times. Boom, boom, boom. OK, we want him to I mean, he grumbles a lot. OK, so I'm going to go back in here and hit up to recompile everything. Now I'm going to say Java and the only one I will run is the one that has the main. I will not be interacting at all on the command prompt window with this class other than compiling it. This class can call on any other ones at once. OK, so let's run troll runner. 
Roar, roar, roar. Okay, so that's the basics of how to get two classes to work together, okay? Just to reiterate, only one of the two classes has a main. I really clearly named it the runner. So anybody using my program would know this is the one that you actually run that has the main. And all that main does is say, let's make of the troll class one named Grumble. And so over here, we look at the troll class and go, oh, what can Grumble do? Oh, wow, he's got no facts or attributes or variables about him. But he does have one ability. That ability is called Roar. It's publicly available for anybody to tell Grumble to roar. Okay, and all that roar does is print one line. Now going back over here, I say, okay, so I created a troll called Grumble. He is a new object of the troll class. Um, and down here, Grumble just roars. And then we tell Grumble to roar again. And then Grumble roar again. All right, so that's the basics of how to have two classes um, work together. Just one little side note, um, you could totally do this separately. You could have just said, uh, let's reserve space in memory for something of the troll class, but it's not set up yet. So if I didn't do the new um, troll, I haven't actually built. All I've done is said, I'm going to reserve this name Grumble in a spot in memory, okay, for a troll, but I didn't actually create the troll. So it's kind of just blank and nothing there. So if I tried to save this and go back in here and recompile, um, I can't, now it's saying it, it might not have been set up. Like you, yeah, it's a troll, but you never actually built a troll. So Grumble can't do anything because he doesn't exist yet. Um, you could do that in the next line, say Grumble is equal to a new troll. And so you could do that in two separate steps. Uh, but I just like to do it all in one. So I just wanted to show you that's really two separate things. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next one, we'll dive more into how we use variables, how we use functions.